For the first part of the experiment, you will need to prepare your own NaOH solution. It's very important that you prepare the solution as well as you can, and bear in mind that once you have prepared your own NaOH solution, that is the solution you will be using to do the rest of the experiment. If you run through that solution and there's none left, you will have to start the entire experiment over again. So do be aware of that when you're doing this particular experiment. To prepare your own NaOH solution, obtain the concentrated sodium hydroxide solution, 6 molar, and use a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder to measure approximately 8 or 9 milliliters of this base solution. Again, the exact volume is not important, but it is important that you know the volume exactly. Also remember that a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder can be read to two digits after the decimal. Transfer this base solution to your 600 milliliter beaker. between 450 and 500 milliliters of distilled water carefully to your 600 milliliter beaker. The effect of this will be to assist in diluting your base, but it's not a bad idea to swirl in between. At this point, you should obtain a glass stirring rod and stir your solution for at least two minutes to ensure that your solution is completely homogeneous. Please understand that the sodium hydroxide solution that is very concentrated is also extremely dense and will preferentially remain on the bottom of the beaker. Although we have assisted this process by adding a little bit of water swirling and then adding the rest of the water, it is still essential to make sure that the sodium hydroxide solution has the opportunity to mix thoroughly with the water and become a homogeneous solution. Once the solution has become homogeneous, it will remain that way. For the purpose of this lab, we have a large number of labels that have been prepared for you. And it is strongly advised that you use these labels as and where you need them. To prepare your setup, obtain the extension L bar and place a clamp on it and then attach it to the stand on your bench. Obtain a burette clamp which is located underneath the sink on either side of every section. Place the burette clamp on the extension L bar. You may obtain two 25 milliliter burettes, which will be located on carts in the front of the lab. One burette will be for measuring your acid solution and the other burette will be for measuring your base solution. Before you put anything in the burette, if you wish, you may wash them by simply rinsing with warm water and then rinsing again with distilled water. Do not use soap because all the solutions being used are aqueous. Once you have done this, whatever solution you are going to place in the burette Obtain a few milliliters of this solution and rinse the burette with that. This will ensure that your burette will contain nothing but what you want it to have. For example, if you're going to place the base solution in your burette, add a small amount of the base, and then you may obtain a piece of brown paper to use as a small plug and gently 
rotate the burette to allow the solution to pick up anything that may be in the burette. Make sure to drain this through the bottom by opening the top. Replace the burette, close the top, and now you may fill the burette. If you are more comfortable, you may use a funnel. Fill above the zero line. And then use a beaker to drain to the zero, ensuring that there are no air bubbles in the tip. Wait for approximately 30 seconds to ensure that the tip is not leaking. If it is, simply push the tip back up into the burette and wait another 30 seconds. If the burette is still leaking, Please take the burette to your TA, inform your TA that the burette is leaking, and obtain another burette. You know that you are ready to begin when the bottom of the meniscus is at the zero line. At any time when you read a volume on the burette, you should always be reading from the bottom of the meniscus. Make sure not to have a parallax error by ensuring that your eye is at the line of the bottom of the meniscus. You may also calculate the approximate uh, concentration of your base solution by using the total volume, the initial concentration of the base, and its initial volume. You will not need this for any future calculations. But when you determine the exact concentration of your base, it's good to have a little check. Obtain your standard acid and repeat the procedure that you just performed for the base. Note that the burette tip can be rotated depending on whether you are right-handed or left-handed. The burette tip should always be on the side that is your weaker side. Uh, your strong hand should be used to swirl and your weak hand should be used to control the burette tip. Fill the burette, the second burette, with your standard acid solution. Once again, filling above the meniscus line, the zero line, and going down to ensure that there are no air bubbles and that you start at zero. In your locker, you will have four Erlenmeyer flasks. For this experiment, you will be sharing this locker with your partner, but you will be performing the experiment individually. Obtain one 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and one 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. It is also a good idea for this particular experiment to have a piece of white paper that you can place on the bench in order to be able to see clearly when your color will change. For the titration, we will be using phenolphthalein as our indicator. Phenolphthalein is colorless in acid and bright pink in base. As the colorless to base to pink color is much easier to observe, we will place the acid in the Erlenmeyer flask and titrate the acid with the base. Place approximately 20 milliliters of your acid in the Erlenmeyer flask. 
It doesn't matter what volume you put in as long as you know exactly what the volume is. It's also important to remember that the urette can be read to two digits after the decimal place. At any time, if you need, you can adjust the height of either the burettes individually or the entire apparatus. It is advised to do multiple trials for this part of the experiment, and in fact, for every part of this experiment. Three trials minimum are advised, and it is a good idea to use different volumes of acid and in each trial. I have taken exactly 20 milliliters of the acid. Once you have obtained the acid, Add the phenolphthalein immediately so as not to forget. Three drops is more than enough. Swirl to make sure that the phenolphthalein is well mixed with the acid. Check to make sure that there are no air bubbles. If there are, you should remove them and refill. You are now ready to begin the titration itself. The good technique for titration is to swirl constantly. For this purpose, you would like to have the flask well above the surface of the bench in order not to bang the flask on the bench itself and thereby not to break the flask. As you're swirling, you may start with a strong flow of the base. At this point in time, you will notice that there is no color change at all, and so you may add the base quite rapidly. When you start to see the first signs of pink, you should very much slow down the addition of the base. Then you should commence dropwise addition of the base. And the drops can be rapid at the beginning and can slow as you get closer to the end point. Note that the right hand should be constantly swirling while the left hand never leaves the tap. The pink color has disappeared, but this tells us that if we are close to the end point and so now the drip rate should be significantly slowed. If you're not sure if it's the end point, it's better to stop, swirl, and wait till the color disappears. At this point in time, you can also wash down the edges of your flask with a wash bottle containing distilled water. You may stop the titration at any time and rinse the edges as well as the tip of the burette and the flask without affecting the result of your titration. Please think about why this is the case. To show you, if you do not swirl, that the pink color remains in the center. And when we swirl, we have a light pink color. Now, the, the marker for the end of the titration is if the pink color lasts for 30 seconds while swirling. 
If the pink color disappears before 30 seconds is over, then you still need to add a small amount of the base. If, however, the pink color remains, you have successfully completed the titration. You are looking for the palest pink color you can obtain. Make sure to read the volume of the base before doing anything else. Here the volume is 18 point zero five. Once you have completed your titration, you will need to repeat the titration a minimum of two times. Once you have reproducible results to within plus or minus 2%, you may calculate the exact concentration of your base. You will then use this standardized solution to complete the remainder of the experiment. In the next part, you will determine the concentration of an unknown acid. The standard acid is monoprotic, the unknown acid is diprotic, meaning it has two titratable protons. Once you've titrated the unknown acid, you will then determine the concentration of a juice sample. The juice contains an acid that is triprotic, or has three titratable protons. When you have determined its concentration, you will use that concentration and some other information in your lab manual as well as the density of the juice, which you must note down to calculate the mass percent of acid in the juice. I remind you once again that this lab will be performed individually and in part can be considered as a lab exam. Good luck, and this is a basic overview of what you will be doing in lab. Study.